um, uh, my name is Ignacio, and the director of the Nebula Open Source uh, Project. And uh, I have to say, uh, for all of us, for the team, this is one of the uh, best, uh, you know, weeks of the year when we uh, share with you the last uh, progress of the of the project, and also when we know about uh, more details uh, about how you are using Open Nebula to create, you customize your own cloud solution, your own cloud product. Before, I mean, uh, giving an introduction of the project, um, describing our progress since our last Open Nebula conference, uh, I would like to uh, ask you a question. Also, why private cloud? I think this is a very good question here because this is an event about uh, private cloud computing management, Open Nebula is an open source technology to build private clouds. So uh, the question is, do we need private clouds? I mean, uh, in the last two, three months, several people uh, asked me this question. Do we really need private clouds? I mean, there are many big cloud providers around. You have Google, you have Azure, uh, you have um, Amazon, you have Sublayer. I mean, they are reducing prices. You know, they have very good offers, and this seems that the future is going to be centralized. Uh, you know that it uh, has been about 11 years since Amazon uh, kicked off the most transformative uh, provision uh, paradigm shift in the history of data center infrastructure, bringing terms like uh, paper use, elasticity, on demand to the data center infrastructure. And now, if we evaluate the market, uh, we can see two very important things here. First, we can see that it's a very highly concentrated market. If you see this um, graph here, you can see that the four big players, uh, Amazon, Azure, uh, Google, and Sublayer, aggregate 55% of the market. And the next 20 players, the 25%. Okay? And moreover, the, uh, this concentration is increasing because if you see, uh, the year over year growth here, you will see that in average, the four main uh, cloud providers are uh, growing revenues at 70%, while the next 20 players are growing at 41%. So we see that this is a very highly concentrated market, and this, is, this concentration is growing. You want to evaluate the data center footprint, they have a global infrastructure. You have 14 regions, Amazon, you have 30 regions uh, managed by Azure, and you have oh, six regions by, by Google. And if we try to estimate the size of this infrastructure, uh, you have here a table with uh, information about the number of zones of each of these providers in 2016. You have Amazon 38, Azure 30, uh, Google 31, SoftLayer 6. You have here an estimation estimate of the number of servers. This is based on different sources. Okay? And this is the, new, the number of new zones that are being built this year. So uh, here you can see that the four big players house between four and eight million of servers. Okay? This is a huge quantity. And this number is estimated to grow 25%. If we see the number of new zones being built in 2017 compared with the zones now running, um, this could be even higher because we can see that the growth in revenue is 70%. So uh, the question is, what's the future of the cloud? Is only public cloud is centralized? Maybe after all, Thomas Watson was right. I mean, when he said that there's only a market need in the world for five clouds, you know? So this is a very good question here. I mean, what's the future? Do we need, really need a private clouds? This is the information uh, that we have right now about the state of the uh, public cloud market. But if we evaluate in more detail, uh, we can see that public cloud is a fraction of IT infrastructure market. Firstly, because public cloud only represents 12% of internet computing power. Uh, different sources show that um, 10 million blade servers are shipped uh, annually. Uh, now we have in operation about 50 million servers. So that means that the number of servers being managed by the big cloud providers are only 12%. And moreover, if we compare with the number of data centers, 
is they have a tiny fraction of existing data centers. Uh, there are uh, some studies that show that there are now three million data centers only in the US, only the US. And the number of data centers growing, picking almost nine million by 2017. You have also here interesting information that show what is the spending of IT infrastructure. This here is public cloud, okay? And here you have, so this is public and this is private. So we can see how the spending of private cloud is growing compared to uh, public cloud. So uh, it's clear that the future of the cloud is going to be uh, distributed. We are going to have public cloud providers, that's clear. But we are also having a growing number of private cloud uh, infrastructure. Uh, why? Well, usually there are four main reasons for deploying your own private cloud. You have performance, for example, latency. You need to own data centers close to the users because you're going to minimize latency. You can have um, performance because of your workload profile, for example, in HPC. You require different devices that are not provided by the cloud providers. Other reason is security because you want to achieve uh, an isolated environment. You want to uh, provide a uh, level of confidentiality that, that cloud providers cannot offer. Of course, cost. You know that many data centers now have a scale that allow them to uh, do it cheaper themselves. Okay? And uh, moreover, it's clear that only in case of high variability, I mean, it's better to go to public cloud compared with uh, private. And of course, existing infrastructure. We are going to see today uh, different keynotes and talks about you know, experiences building private clouds. In, in all cases, you will see that uh, those organizations uh, already have, before building the cloud, already have infrastructure and know-how that allow them to build those private clouds. Well, now coming back to the uh, uh, conference uh, itself, this is the fifth conference of Open Nebula. We have uh, two first conference in Berlin, then we organize it two in Barcelona. This is the fifth Open Nebula conference, our first conference in US, Boston. And in October, we are organizing our sixth uh, conference in, in Madrid. Um, let me uh, give you a um, very uh, brief uh, overview of our programs since last, our last conference, uh, seven months ago, um, uh, about the product, about the users, and about the community. About the product, uh, of course, our aim as open source uh, communities to build a product, to build, maintain a product. This is the Open Nebula Open Source Cloud Management Platform. Um, many times uh, people ask why, why we are building this and we are, we are maintaining Open Nebula, basically uh, because we want to bring simplicity to the private cloud. So for us, simplicity is that you don't need an army of administrators to build and maintain your cloud. We also have openness, so you can run production-ready software that is fully open source without any extensions. So for us, it's very important to provide open source that is enterprise-ready at the same time. We also have uh, reliability, so your cloud will run for years with little maintenance. And finally, uh, flexibility. When we started um, Open Nebula almost uh, nine years ago, uh, we uh, envisioned our cloud as an evolution of data centers. So uh, we thought that it was very important to create a technology that could fit into any environment from the perspective of the system infrastructure or the system uh, processes. Um, there are other uh, technologies to build uh, clouds, to build private clouds. How uh, we compare with them. Uh, first, because Open Nebula is uh, very light and simple, so we have tried to develop a technology that is very simple uh, to build, to operate, and to use. Also, it's quite flexible. This is fully open source. It's not that it's open source. It's also that it exhibits a quite modular architecture. So you want to uh, integrate Open Nebula with any existing uh, uh, device infrastructure in your data center so you can adapt or you can create your own a plugin. It's a quite robust. This is uh, production ready. It's highly scalable. Um, it's powerful. I mean, we have some features that we're going to present uh, here during the day that are not provided by others. For example, uh, the simplicity to create federated environments, uh, to provide hybrid cloud computing with cloud bursting, the provisioning of uh, virtual data centers. I mean, some, they are some of the features that are unique in our case. Uh, I think that it's important to remark that um, in Open Nebula there is only one uh, distribution, so 
this is not a project when you have the vanilla open source software and then you also have enterprise editions. There's only a single open nebula distribution. Okay. This distribution is uh, fully open source and enterprise ready. So it's Apache license, okay? And when we um, release a new version of the code, it has been certified and has been tested internally and by the community. Uh, it's delivered for a single package. This is also very important. You know there are other open source projects where you have to integrate many different components to build something functional. In our case, it's a single package and it's very easy uh, to, to upgrade. So we have um, you know, feedback from, from users that have been able to upgrade very large scale environments in only half an hour in production. And uh, quite mature. I mean, we have released it almost 90 versions of the code. Uh, this is the announcement of our first uh, release. It was in March 2008. Okay. So uh, it's uh, nine years ago. So this is the announcement of our uh, technology preview. Okay, so at that time, we, uh, you can see here that we envision it for cloud as an evolution of data center. And we try to build a technology that is simple and at the same time flexible because uh, we wanted to, uh, to provide all users with a management platform to enable them to build the private cloud. And this is our timeline. Open Nebula started as a research project. We started in 2005 as a research project. And we started as a research project funded by uh, European Commission uh, research uh, grants. And now, since 2011, it operates as an open source project that is funded and driven by the, by the users. We have users in different industries. You have here government, uh, you have here uh, telecom operators, you have here uh, some vendors, you have uh, universities, super computing centers. These are some examples of uh, our users. Um, important message here is that uh, we uh, reinvest all our profits into growing the project. So our aim is to build the best open source cloud management platform. That is our, our aim, okay? And also, we try to uh, foster you know, a healthy dialogue between academia, be, uh, research, and, and industry. And we think that open source is the environment where you know, research, academia, industry can you know, share new ideas and collaborate. Uh, now about the, the new features. I mean, since last uh, Open Nebula Conf, seven months ago, we have released one version of the code that is 5.4. Uh, uh, we, a couple of weeks ago, we released the beta version of the code and we are releasing the final version in a couple of weeks. Now, Ruben will tell you more details. Ruben? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so 5.4, it's, uh, it's been a um, very long release. It's, uh, it took us like uh, nine months to develop all the things. And the blueprints for 5.4 were even more simplified the, uh, the way Open Nebula works, right? So we have like um, three major uh, areas of, uh, of, uh, of work. The first one is we wanted to simplify the deployment. In particular, we want to tackle all the problems that we are having with HA deployments and federation. I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, in a minute. Oh, uh, okay. Right here. Thank you. Um, also, there are some current features that um, need uh, to work a little bit better, like um, um, management of VMs being even more flexible, defining networks and that kind of things, and also being a, a, a few hints ab about the, the work in the, in the data. And uh, <clears throat> the other big uh, star in 5.4 uh, is going to be vCenter. Tino is going to give you a, a very deep presentation about the features in vCenter. And uh, I'm not going to talk about this center in this in this talk, but you're going to have uh, all the details in uh, in a few talks. Uh, Big center is um, <clears throat> is 
is being a, a, a hypervisor. Um, uh, we are seeing that in, in our user base. It's, uh, it's like uh, uh, as important as KVM, and we wanted to level uh, vCenter VMware integration uh, with uh, KVM. So I think that today or in the next release, both hypervisors are as functional or each other, right? And uh, there are also other minor en enhancements uh, um, that are packed in, in 5.4. So um, about federation. As you probably know, some of you, um, our um, HA um, um, deployments are based in the typical HA cluster configurations from, from the cluster tool. So you, you, if you want to deploy OpenEula in a high availability configurations, you need to deploy Crossing, Peacemaker, and a lot of stuff to make the things working. And um, in, um, at the end, we, we, we had a lot of problems, or the user base had a lot of problems with that software, because when the cluster fails, uh, restarting, rebooting the, all the Crossing, Peacemaker things, it's making a lot of uh, headaches to, to people. So we, we take a look at, uh, at the thing and uh, what other projects are doing in, the, in that area. And uh, we implemented uh, the RAPT consensus algorithm, which is uh, used by Consul by a lot of projects. And uh, that it's um, uh, implemented and, uh, and it's going to be released in 5.4. So right now it's um, quite easy, or it's much more easy to deploy Open Nebula and HA. So we, you have basically one leader Open Nebula where you are performing all the updates to the system and all the changes are replicated to uh, three, five followers in that zone. So when the uh, leader falls down, one of the followers elects a, a new leader and becomes the leader of the cluster and take control for all the things going in your, in your, in your open nebula cluster. Um, the system is architected in a way that only the leader is talking with the hypervisors, only the uh, scheduler in the leader is uh, deploying virtual machines and that kind of things. We also prepare a couple of hooks so you can uh, define floating IPs, IPs for the for Sandstone, for example, when a leader comes down, it can execute code. When the follower bec uh, uh, becomes a, a leader, can execute a hook, so you can uh, reconfigure IPs and that kind of thing. Um, the uh, uh, so now deploying um, uh, OpenAble and HA is a matter of uh, five minutes, something like that, or even less. Um, federation was always also giving headaches to people because um, um, right now it's based on replicating the database and we were using uh, MySQL master slave for, for that. And also we, that is uh, giving problems in some uh, scenarios. So we um, uh, implement our own replication based also in the RAPT algorithm. And uh, now the replication is handled by 1D so you can replicate or install a federation without the need to install or configure MySQL in a master slave replication mode. And you can, co can combine both. So you can have a, a zone with multiple HA, open nebula uh, uh, servers working, and that replicating another zone with another uh, set of uh, open nebula demons working together. So the replication happens from here to one guy here, and then it's replicated to the others. So you, you can mix the both things. So uh, <clears throat> this is going to be released in 5.4, and uh, I hope it will help uh, people to deploy such scenarios more easily and more in a simple way. <clears throat> I also pick uh, VM groups. I think this is uh, a nice feature, and I wanted to bring it here because I, I want to say a few words about OneFlow. Uh, Right now we have a kind of uh, soft affinity for, for VMs in OneFlow. In the um, 5.4 we have a full future affinity and anti-affinity rules. So you can, you can define VM groups, and in a VM groups you define like affinity rules for your, for your VMs. So for example, I, you, uh, you have uh, a set of VMs that are going to deploy a, a web application. So you have your DB VMs, your monitor VMs, your front-end VMs, and backup VMs. So you can define roles, and the roles can have like VM to VM affinity, so you, you can say, oh, I want all my monitor VMs in the same node, back in the same node. They can have uh, uh, host affinity. For example, I want to deploy my, my backup or my backup VMs in host 
four, five, or six, or cluster, whatever, because I have uh, high performance uh, I.O. in those hosts. Or you can has also have role to role affinity. So you can say something like, I don't want my DB VMs together with the backup VMs, that kind of thing. So the OpenMLA scheduler takes care of uh, all the scheduling and place your, your VM. Uh, as you can see here, VM or the names are quite similar to the one flow. This is not going to happen in 5.4, but our idea is in the future to evolve one flow to um, VM groups to come together in the, in the same functional piece, right? Uh, other things, there are a lot of things. We have um, new address range for IPv6, so you can define no Slack uh, addresses. Uh, we have uh, security groups for IPv6, thanks to a uh, patch submitted by, by Roy, and uh, that has been merged, and it's uh, ready in, uh, in 5.4. We have improved audit trails, so history records uh, store uh, who made the operation, What's the request ID of the operation? You so you can track that to the logs and find out who, wh wh where the operations comes from. Uh, you can redefine the action range of any operation. Like for example, I want to be migration uh, require use write instead of uh, admin write. That kind of thing. So it's more simple to define your access policies and that kind of things. Self also took a lot of, uh, uh, few, uh, some care from from us. The snapshots are not going to be uh, deleted, so you can preserve those. Uh, tools to perform some housekeeping database, and of course, Sandstone, we will work some dialogues, expose the new functionality and that kind of thing. So that's basically it. Uh, we plan to make a release like uh, next week, beta, a beta 2, uh, with uh, a lot of bug fixing from, from the release, and probably in uh, a week or two, make the release candidate from, from here, right? So, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that uh, for us also very important to have your feedback. So if you have tried the uh, beta of 5.4, uh, we are looking forward to having more information about your experiences. Uh, we are ending this uh, cycle. So we are now defining the roadmap for 5.6. So if you have a, you know, any uh, specific requirement or you would like to see any specific feature you know, in Open Nebula, of course, we are also open to have your feedback during this uh, event. And also, I think it's important to thank uh, contributors and uh, sponsors, uh, especially to BlackBerry and uh, UCL, who have uh, um, funded part of the new uh, features that have been you know, incorporated into 5.4. About users, uh, we know that they're now running more than uh, 3,500 clouds with Open Nebula worldwide, and the largest one is uh, with 300,000 cores and 16 uh, data centers. That's the uh, information we have for our marketplace. And we are, or we can also confirm that the um, number of downloads is growing at the uh, same uh, rate. This is important for us, but these are only numbers. We are more interested in the stories behind these numbers. So we are looking forward to your contribution to our blog. So you want to share your experiences, information about your deployments. I mean, we can give you an account so you can uh, describe your infrastructure uh, there. Uh, about the uh, community, you know that we have different ways to contribute to Open Nebula. Of course, one of them is using. This is very important. Um, providing feedback about uh, the, the software. Um, other is developing new components or patches to, back, uh, to uh, fix uh, bugs. Uh, to communicate, this is uh, participate in events like this one. We organize uh, technology uh, days. And of course, in integration, we have an add-ons catalog and ecosystem directory with components developed by third parties that complement the functionality provided by Open Nebula. Uh, about the cloud tech days, this is the list of tech days that we are organizing uh, this year, 2017. Uh, you know, these are education events hosted by, by users. So um, we want to thank organization that hosted a tech day or are hosting a tech day this year. And of course, we look forward to organizing a tech day at your site. So the idea is you, when you organize a, a tech day, uh, I mean, we only need a room, Wi-Fi access, and we uh, organize a tutorial during the, the day. And in the afternoon, we have presentations from, from users. This is a community event. Uh, about um, 
the conference itself, uh, um, before you know, started the, the contents with the first keynote speakers, I think it's important to remark that this is not a sales and marketing event. So this is not about announcements or about marketing. This is an educational um, event. And it's an opportunity to learn you know, about the cloud, to learn about uh, Open Nebula for real experiences from, from peers. So it's an opportunity also for, for networking. We would like to thank all the speakers, you know, the keynote speakers, the regular speakers, the speakers are also contributing to the lightning talks sessions in the um, in the afternoon, and to their uh, members of the team that have con are contributing to the to the agenda today, and also I would like to invite you to participate in the next uh, conference in in Madrid in in October. So uh, oh, announcement. Uh, you know that we have a lightning talk session at 2.30. Uh, we have five uh, talks now. Uh, I think that we, if you want to present, right, you can send in an email to Tino. So you still have no one, one slot. So everyone is interested in presenting any you know, experience, use case, development, integration. We have that uh, slot available. Um, thank you. Um, that's it. Let's start the conference. <laughs> Thank you.